In my last video, I talked about my goal of crafting a film look in camera with modern digital cameras, and I specifically spoke about my Super 16 lenses and the $200 Canon EOS M hacked with Magic Lantern to shoot in 2.8K RAW with a roughly 3 times crop factor. But with the EOS M, you don't have to only shoot in that mode. You can take advantage of other vintage lenses that cover larger sensors and also produce beautiful imagery. I was lucky enough that my grandfather gave me his old set of vintage Nikkor AIS Prime lenses that he used for film photography and I now use on digital cameras. My first DSLR was actually a Canon T2i hacked with Magic Lantern and with CineStyle installed, and I used the lenses my grandfather gave me along with a $9 adapter to shoot all my videos. My love for those lenses has only grown over the years. I've used them on professional corporate shoots, TV shows, short films, even a feature documentary. This set ranges from a 20mm to a 135mm. The only two lenses I added to round out the set were the 85 and 135. It also includes an 80 to 200 zoom lens and a 2x extender. The Nikkor AIS lenses can be found used fairly cheap online and are sharp, fast, and high quality, but still have a subtle smoothness to the image that makes it feel more organic and separates it from modern sharp lenses like Sigma's. Even though they were made as photography lenses, the Nikkor AIS lenses have been used on actual films, such as the original Star Wars special effects by ILM, stop motion films like Fantastic Mr. Fox, and most recently on White Men Can't Jump. They're fully manual and can be easily cinemodded, but I opted to keep mine as is, just adding 77mm step-up rings so they're all compatible with my NDs and Black Pro Mist filters, and I don't have to buy multiple sizes of the same filters. You can find very fast copies of the various lenses. For example, I have the 50mm f1.4, but there exists a 50mm f1.2. I have the 24 and the 28mm f2.8, but you can find versions that go up to f2. The Nikkor AIS lenses also cover full-frame sensors, so with the EOS M you can use them with a speed booster and get a larger field of view and even better low-light performance. One thing to note though, these lenses focus the opposite direction from what you're probably used to. It's been years and I still don't have reliable muscle memory for focusing because I use various different lens brands, but a quick two second test every time I put on a new lens tells me all I need to know. So with my EOS M, even though they cover full frame, I'm using a normal lens adapter and shooting in one of the modes that shoots raw video with no extra crop so I'm getting a super 35mm-ish field of view. I take the MLV RAW files and convert them to Cinema DNG in the free MLV app for Magic Lantern RAW video. I then bring the Cinema DNGs into DaVinci Resolve where I have full control over the image. Here I identify the film stock I want to replicate and try to match the look as close as possible. The 14-bit RAW image from the EOS M gives me lots of flexibility, but the reason I use vintage lenses is because getting as much done as you can in camera is always going to look much better and be a lot easier than trying to do it in post. Here's an example. I bought Dehancer to use on a short film I recently made, which I shot entirely on vintage Helios lenses and the Great Joy 1.35x anamorphic adapter on a Sony FX3. The things that vintage lenses do, such as softness, subtle bloom, halation, and chromatic aberration, can all be emulated by Dehancer. These are also qualities of actual film. But look at these two images and note the difference between the one shot on a vintage lens and the one shot on a modern Sigma art lens. To my eye, trying to dehance the image that was captured super sharp looks kind of fake like a filter, but adding a bit of dehancer to something shot with a vintage lens is like putting the cherry on a cake. It will help bolster what's already there, specifically giving me authentic film grain emulation that responds to the light values of each shot, because that's one thing most digital sensors suck at, grainy images with pixels that give away that digital look, with the exception of airy cameras and the digital Bolex that have ISO grain that strongly resembles true film grain. Another in-camera tip I picked up along the way. Using a Black Pro Mist 1 8 or 1 quarter filter on your lens will bloom the highlights, but in doing so it creates a softer highlight roll-off. With modern digital sensors, blown out highlights tend to clip to pure white and gives away the fact that your camera doesn't have the dynamic range of film. But I think a subtle mist filter emulates the gradual roll-off of film. Thanks for watching! I'll link some videos in the description below that also show off what Nikkor AIS lenses are capable of. Please consider subscribing, because next time, I'll be showing you my Helios lens set. Da, it is time for the Helios swirl, babushka. So how, how did you think it go? I thought it went very well. <laughs>